and welcome to my guide for the law of the vampires. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to use every single spell in the law of the vampires, including all of their effects and the best use case for each spell. Law of the vampires is one of the most legendary laws in the game. It can take what seems to be a mediocre army and keep it alive through ridiculous circumstances. Of course, it has some of the most legendary damaging spells in the game, so it is always worth picking up if you can. The Lore of the Vampires is only accessible to two factions, those being the Vampire Counts and, of course, the Vampire Coast. First up, as with all laws, we have the passive, Curse of the Undeath. Now, this targets friendly units map-wide and restores up to 56 HP over 7 seconds. This can resurrect dead units if all living units are full HP. Now, this is a nice free effect to give your army some regeneration whenever you cast a spell. If you're really into min-maxing, it's worth letting your units take a single hit before casting to make the most of the heal. That being said, 56 HP is pretty insignificant, so it's not really going to make the difference between life and death, so I wouldn't worry about it too much and just enjoy the very light regen that your entire army will get. Of course, the more units and the higher tier units you have, the more value you get out of this passive, so it's one of those that only really gets better as the game goes on. Our first actual spell is Van Hell's Dance Macabre. This is an augment spell and costs 4 winds of magic and has a 28 second cooldown. It can target the castle themselves or a single allied unit and has a range of 200 meters. It imbues the target with 25% speed and 24 melee attack for 29 seconds. You want to cast this on your best units just as lines clash to make sure they are throwing out the most damage possible. Graveguard greatswords, some wraiths or even your lords and heroes are all good targets for this just to increase that damage output. The more elite units you cast it on, the more value you are going to get. The speed is also a nice touch so if something needs to run away this can give them a little boost. Alternatively, you can use this on cav and they will hit extremely hard when they hit the enemy lines. The Overcast, as with all, has a 50% chance of a miscast, costs 8 wins of magic, and now affects allies in a 40 meter area of effect. It's pretty much the same as the regular version, apart from now you can hit a bunch of units, so cast in the middle of your front lines to hit as many units as possible and turn up your damage output considerably. Again, higher tier units you use this on, the more value you're going to get, so this spell only really gets better as the game goes on. As you're going to see, the vampire counts scale very very well into the late game. Our next spell is the Invocation of Nahek. This is a regeneration spell, costs 6 winds of magic and has a 30 second cooldown. It can target the castle themselves or a single allied unit over a range of 200 meters. It restores up to 864 HP over 18 seconds and can resurrect dead units if all living units are full HP. You want to focus this again on your most valuable units to keep them alive and at full HP as much as possible. The heal is the same amount every time so focusing it on your most valuable units just means more spell value. And you can also use this at the end of battles to get some free replenishment before exiting to the campaign map. The overcast costs 12 winds of magic and now affects up to 4 allied units in a 40 meter area of effect and it heals 864 HP per unit. This is pretty much the same as the base spell but now you can hit 4 units at once. To try to make sure you're targeting the right units, you can tell via the highlighting. This lets you focus on the highest value targets. Now this makes replenishment at the end of battles even stronger as you can spam heal on a ton of units at once. Of course, during combat it's even more valuable as it keeps a large number of your units at high HP meaning the enemy has to work twice as hard to take them out. Next up we have Raise Dead and this is of course a summon spell. This costs 4 wins of magic, has a 39 second cooldown and can only be used 7 times per battle. You have to target it directly on the ground and it has a short range of 60 meters. It summons a unit of zombies which will degrade over time. Now since it's a unit of zombies, they aren't exactly going to roll over anything you send them against so the only real use is to bog down enemy units. This can allow you to evacuate some of your own units or pin down the enemy and burst them down before they can escape which works particularly well against cav. The overcast costs 6 winds of magic and now summons a unit of skeleton warriors. Now skeleton warriors are a minor step up from zombies but they are still very weak units so aren't going to beat much in a 1 versus 1. I would say use this when the enemy would otherwise walk over the zombies and you want to pin them down and take them out as quickly as possible. Both versions of this spell are simply to distract the enemy and keep them busy. They are not going to win you the fight. Next up we have the Gaze of Nagash and this is a magic missile spell. It costs 7 winds of magic and has a 44 second cooldown. It is targeted on a single enemy unit over a range of 250 meters. It causes moderate magical damage that is most effective from a high angle and decent versus armor and single large targets. To be honest this spell needs so much line of sight I would only say to use it when you're on a flying mount otherwise you're probably going to hit the ground or miss. If you don't have all the spells unlocked or only have a few wins of magic to spare then this can do some decent damage to a single target such as a large giant. But if you have everything then it's probably more worth your time to wait for another spell that can do a lot more damage to a lot more units. The overcast costs 14 wins of magic and increases the number of missiles. Honestly I'm not sure you should ever use this unless you're down to a 1 versus 1 duel between two large targets. The wins just aren't worth burning on something like this in any other scenario. You're spending 14 wins of magic to do a decent amount of damage but to only a single unit. 
when you're fighting against an army, that is just not worth it. Next up, we have Curse of Years. It's a hex spell and costs 11 wins of magic. It has a 47 second cooldown and affects all enemies in a 40 meter area of effect over a range of 200 meters. It imbues them with minus 24 melee attack, minus 25% speed, and plus 15's all ability cooldowns for 32 seconds. Now this can be a good one versus cav or mounted lords, as the speed reduction can allow you to pin them down whilst the melee attack ensures they won't do any damage. It is rather expensive for a hex, but since it can hit enemies in an area of effect, you can significantly reduce the army damage output if it is used on a clump. Use this if an area of the enemy army is pumping damage and you need to slow them down. It also works quite well hand in hand with Van Hell's Downs Macabre, as you can buff your units whilst debuffing theirs, which results in a very swift defeat for the enemies. And our final spell is the legendary Wind of Death. This is of course a wind spell and costs 20 winds of magic and has a 44 second cooldown. It targets the ground and has a range of 150 meters. It causes major magical damage in a medium forward moving area of effect. This area moves quickly, so this is strong versus clumps and deals enough damage to get through armor. This is the ultimate spell for taking out clumps of enemies. Simply ball them up and cast and watch them fall down with not a lot of them getting back up. The damage is very strong and affects all units equally, whether they have armor or not. The Overcast costs a whopping 27 wins of magic and somehow does even more damage. The Overcast literally wipes anything in its path off the face of the earth. The enemy could have a stack full of great swords or fully armored chaos warriors and they will be reduced to a fine mist with a single cast of this. The cost is extremely expensive, but if it is well placed, you should only need to use it once. That being said, it's worth remembering that this damage has no allegiance, so make sure your units are clear, otherwise they will feel the pain just as much. And that concludes everything you need to know about the lore of the vampires. Hope that you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, be sure to leave it a like. Leave a comment down below with any questions you have about this lore, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Of course, Warhammer 3 content is coming extremely soon, so definitely subscribe if you want to see that. I'd like to take this time to thank all supporters of the channel, including Dominic Shamas, and in particular, Henry Tucker for their support at the Unclean Ones tier. I really can't thank each and every supporter enough. One more time, thank you all so very much for watching, and for now, I've been Colonel Damders, and I will see you next turn.